that you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. kindreds and unrepentant sinners out there hopefully will change their ways I'm here to continue with my testimony <clears throat> so like I was saying God's revealed after I started having these supernatural experiences God told me his name was Omni now I have never heard anyone else refer to God as Omni ever ever and I, and I don't you know I don't understand. I mean, they have other names. It doesn't matter. As long as we're talking about the king of all kings, the most high, that's all that matters. Okay? But that's what I call him. So when I talk about Omni, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus as father. Okay? I'm not talking about some exotic odd God and trying to... No. I'm talking about the most high. Okay? Some people call him Abba, Father, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya. There's many names. Okay? Great I am. Okay. So anyway... <clears throat> As Omni was in introducing Omni's self, he would manifest in many different amazing forms. Things that are hard for me to describe, and I have a wild imagination. Omni's manifestations inspired awe, fear, and a deep and profound love behind my limited, feeble-minded comprehension. I saw Omni manifest as a solid rock. And it was alive, and it slowly opened up two glowing eyes. I saw Omni as an amorphous living shape, resembling the night sky, lounging up in the top of the tree branches. And against the, the backdrop of the night sky, this figure contained more stars within itself than the actual sky and was darker than the actual night. When I saw the miracle of the star body lounging, lounging in the treetops, for a moment I remember looking across the street, past the tree, up into the bare upstairs window of an expensive Haight Street home. And there was a couple sitting on the couch with their backs facing the window, sucked into some vapid television program. And I remember feeling deeply sad for them that they were missing out because they were essentially imprisoned in their expensive home, sucked into a meaningless TV show like it's a privilege, while right outside, practically in their own backyard, God was miraculously manifested in the treetops as this strange star body, and they never even knew it or realized it because they were blinded by a meaningless distraction in their expensive private man-made box. And people are always asking for a sign from God. They're always wanting proof of God and everything. How can you ever see him if you don't know how he speaks, how abstract he is, and that he's there? Because you're busy watching, you know, um, 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 I think they're watching like Criminal Minds or something. Okay? And God was outside. Tangibly. Visibly. So... I saw Omni in what can only be described as a humorous Hollywood Squares game show taking place up in the canopy in the forest, where all these dramatically different characters, some of whom would be sworn enemies in earthly life, were all humorously interacting with each other, including a cowboy and a Native American Indian. One character in particular shattered all my preconceptions of what having 
is really like and what is possible there. To my utter shock and disbelief, as ridiculous as it sounds, one of the spirits, live and supernaturally animated, walking around the forest, was the cartoon character Betty Boop, okay? I know, I know. It probably sounds utterly ridiculous. I thought that too when I saw her, but that's who it was, Betty Boop. Among all the preconceived notion-shattering miraculous supernatural manifestations, something about a living cartoon character who is famous on Earth showing up as a celestial spirit really blew my mind. Yes, there was Hollywood squares happening in the trees with people who were arch enemies on Earth and other diverse people from conflicting time periods together having fun in the treetops in spirit form. Yes, there was Omni as a living rock slowly opening his eyes. Yes, there was the star body, amorph amorphous living night sky lounging in the tree and, and other seemingly possible occurrences. But something about God showing up as a well-known cartoon character in spirit form completely tipped my scales. My mind couldn't accept it at first. It was utterly absurd. I wondered if the human creator of Betty Boop had based Betty's character on the celestial inspiration or if Omni was displaying Omni's limitless manifestation capabilities. What came first? The spirit or the drawing? But a living spirit cartoon character was impossible. <sighs> that was an incredibly major display of the limitlessness of the prime creator. If Omni wanted to manifest as Betty, Omni could do that. Omni was showing me his sense of humor and that there are no limitations on God. Just because I think it's impossible doesn't mean it can't be done, especially when it comes to God. Okay. Of all the manifestations that Omni would appear as, the most constant and endeared to me was the samurai. I connected deeply with Omni as the samurai. I've always loved samurais. I've always loved the, uh, and respected and honored the Bushido code in my heart and in my soul and my spirit. And um, he would come like that. He was my protector and I loved him implicitly. He would manifest as the epitome of stealth and was swift, efficient, and thorough, skilled beyond belief. He would don all black from head to toe with a mask. When I finally saw him unmasked, he had long black silky hair down to his waist, an ominous figure encompassing all mystery, no one to trifle with, but full of boundless, unbridled love. After experiencing the wondrous manifestations of Omni and seeing Omni manifest as many different forms all at once, in the same space, interacting with each other, because he's omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Every word in the dictionary, or that exists, with the prefix omni, describes God. Okay? I understood after seeing this, the seemingly impossible miracle of God appearing to Moses as the burning bush. I saw him like that too. Not to give glory to me at all. Give glory to God. Give glory to Ami and Jesus, okay? One night I experienced a radical miracle of Omni. I had returned to my spot in the woods to sleep one night to discover that someone had stolen the blanket that I would leave stashed in the bushes. In San Francisco, the temperature drops in the wee hours of the morning. So I knew I was going to be, it was going to be a cold, sleepless night with no covering. As expected, I found myself cold and shivering on the ground. I was curled up in a fetal position, rocking back and forth, praying for help that I was so cold. As I was laying there praying and rocking, I suddenly saw a bright light appear in the tops of the trees and it came towards me. I watched in absolute amazement as it flew over to my spot where I could see it better. It was a flying cloud about four feet long with the face of an old man on one end of it. 
what, something like you'd expect old man winter to look like. Okay. He flew to my spot and he puckered his lips and he began to blow out a spirit cloud back and forth across my spot. Immediately, my spot was about 10 degrees warmer. I was shocked. It was only in the small area of my sleeping space. It wasn't tropical temperatures, but just warm enough that I could sleep through the night comfortably with no blanket. I came to learn that beautifully with Omni and Jesus, enough is as good as a feast. I was astonished and utterly amazed at this tangible display of the Lord. Omni continued to make Omni's known to me. I noticed how he spoke through all things, especially nature. Most times Omni would manifest as a man, but sometimes Omni would be indescribable abstract things. And one particular time he showed up as a black woman in a mis miraculous display that utterly blew my mind. Let me see how much time I got here before I go into this one. 11, I think I can get it out. That's just gonna be like a zillion parts to this testimony. Please bear with me y'all, cause it's incredible. And all, glory be to God, he gave me this testimony. The entire time I lived on the streets of San Francisco, I had pet domesticated rats that accompanied me everywhere, either in this little portable case I would carry around or on my shoulders. Usually I had two, but sometimes through different circumstances, I had just one. My one main special rat was my constant companion. She hung in there with me through all manner of difficulty and frightful experiences where my other rats couldn't hang and would run off. She taught me many things. She was smart, brave, bright, and beautiful. Her name was Skittles. Skit, skit, RIP, I love you. One night, I was walking down the path to get out of the park holding Skittles in my hand when suddenly she fell out like she was dead. Completely motionless and still. I freaked out trying to revive her. Upon further inspection, I saw that she was breathing had her eyes open, but for some reason was completely unresponsive. I was closely staring at her, completely puzzled when I saw something materialize on the surface of her dark open eyes that appeared to be a reflection of some sort. I looked closer and what I saw resembled a ghostly diaphanous scarf floating back and forth across the surface of my rat's dark eyeballs. I looked behind me and all around me to see what was reflecting in her eyes, what could possibly be reflecting in my comatose rat's eyes and saw nothing. Yet this was, yet this was completely, she was completely sedated for reasons I couldn't understand. I suddenly filled with fear. I upped and ran out of the park, gently clutching my beloved rat. As soon as I got to the boundary of the park, she snapped out of it and came to and was completely normal. All right, y'all, I'm going to stop it there because I only got 1336, okay? So stay tuned for what happened with Skittles because it's really incredible. It's miraculous. All right.